Good afternoon. Well, good evening. Perhaps I'll, that would be even better. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I hope everyone's well. I, I, I hope the group is flying high. And um, <clears throat> I know we've been stuck down with, with the weather. It's not been great. Perhaps you've not got out as much as you want to. But it's still important to keep going. And it's still important to, to find a way through. And we all use different ways to find a way through. I think also, um, besides trying to find different ways, there are different things that um, can block us, prevent us from moving forward. <clears throat> they can be overwhelmed. They can be fearful of something that's going wrong. So we retreat to safety. <clears throat> and... Um, one of the things I found about pressing forward or doing something different is um, is that the more that you do something, the more that you step out from your comfort zone, you actually become comfortable with stepping out from your comfort zone. But um, the, the, I think I think the question is is how how do we how do we become um, brave enough? to step forward, to do something that uh, normally that we would be a little bit fearful would probably stop ourselves from doing. Uh, and I think uh, finding uh, calm in yourself, finding an, an inner calm is, 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 is so important. When you think about in the world we live in today, we live in such a fast-paced world. We have information overload we have the mobile phones coming at us all the time constant social media uh, you, you only have to speak about something and the next minute there's an advert that pops up on your mobile phone about the very thing that you've just been talking about it just appears it comes it comes up <clears throat> so you're getting these things constantly thrown at you all the time and and, and it is difficult so we've got to find a mechanism to uh, to relax ourselves so we feel more capable and more confident of actually stepping out of our comfort zones. <clears throat> and I, I use uh, a couple of techniques that I, I'd like to share with this, this particular group uh, this evening. Uh, techniques that I use to uh, try and calm me down. And... Um, I know when uh, I'm not calm. It's it's not only because I feel a bit edgy and you know jumpy, and which we we probably all experience things like that. But I, I'm acutely aware of the energy frequency within my body. And if you imagine a radio wave, you've probably seen those old-fashioned sorts of coil things going around, like sorts of moving that kind of fashion that are going up and and, and down. Well, if you, you can actually feel, as I'm sitting here now, if I, if I become consciously aware of it, I can feel the energy flow within my legs. And that's one of the first places that I, that I sort of notice it. And then if I really begin to focus it, <clears throat> I can feel the energy flow within my hips and then within my shoulders and my arms. And if I really, really concentrate and really focus about it, I can feel it in my chest and uh, also within, within the head. And that's that's the energy within you. And I can tell when I'm not quite calm because those frequencies within me, the energy that I find within me, it's actually bouncing off the inside of, of, of my body. It's bouncing around everywhere. And I can tell that really at this moment in time, I can tell through experience and, and, and uh, from doing this for such a long time that I need to calm that energy frequency down. Uh, within me because if I don't I'm then going to um, I, I'm then going to uh, just just feel edgy, edgy and I, I won't have clarity and thought I will not uh, trust my decision making because of all this energy that's bouncing around in, inside me so one of the first things I would ask you to do is, is sit down somewhere quietly and try and feel the energy within your body now, as I'm sitting here and talking to you now, I'm very aware of the energy within my legs. I, 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 I can feel it. 
and that's what I'm asking you to do. Don't don't think outwards. Just go into the body. Slow everything down. Slow everything down completely and just feel the energy with it. And you shouldn't force your breathing. You breathe through the nose. And you become aware of the cold air hitting the inside of your nostrils. You might become aware of your chest beginning to inflate and your abdomen swell. What all you do is focus on the internal. When I do that, I just, I don't, I don't do, that's not the idea, just naturally breathe. I should uh, possibly point out that this technique was, was taught to me by a, a Buddhist monk in, in, in Thailand. I, I think it's an absolutely excellent uh, technique. So I'm just going to do it now, with, just, just with a couple of minutes with, with you now. As you begin to breathe, if your jaw is clenched, relax the jaw. Now, as I'm breathing now, and because I'm going more inward now, I can feel a stronger frequency of energy within my legs. I'm coming up to my back and my shoulders. Just try this with me. Don't force it. If your mind wanders, come back to the internal breath. Feel cold air hit your nose. And in the periphery of your sensations, as you focus on the internal breath, you'll be aware of your energy. And for me, I always feel it strongly in my legs. I, I don't know why, it's just, just the way it is. And if I focus over a longer period of time, I'll begin to feel it at the back of my arms and in my back. And across my shoulders and my chest and rise to my neck and my ears I feel the energy the great thing about the energy is that you, you suddenly realise how strong it is within you sometimes when you use this technique you may find as you focus and you follow the energy through that your energy just accelerates at an unbelievable speed and you sort of follow it down this channel and as you follow it down you just lose it completely and it's gone that's not unusual now if that does happen just start again come back to your breathing internal breath and feel it from wherever you feel your energy first of all go with that moment but this time, don't allow the energy to, to bounce around within your body everywhere. Calm it down through your breathing. And as you're so you feel the energy and in more control of it, you'll become more focused. Because you're just thinking about your internal breath and the awareness of the energy, but not allowing it to get out of control. 
So that's, that's a great technique that you can really use to really slow everything down. If you feel like you know, the pace of information, the way it travels, you've got so many things to do, um, the roads are getting worse, you, you know, if you are beginning to overwhelm, it's good to slow everything down. And you can use this as a, a fantastic technique to slow things down. And lastly, um, just with regards, because that, that's a great one. I feel really chilled now, if I'm, if I'm to be honest with you. Uh, <clears throat> but but the, the other thing is, because we live in front of these computers, and I must admit, I, I, I hate living in front of these things, but it's, it's here, it's, you know, it's, it's the world we live in now, and um, I have to use them. Uh, I try I try and keep it the majority of the use during the winter months because we're inside and I try and believe it or not this is meant to be the summer but get out in the sun as much as I can while I can the opportunity is there but one of the th consequences of um, of using these computers is to get this constant ache in the back of your neck and across your shoulders because we're hunched over the computer uh, like this and we can feel our, our shoulders and the back of our neck we can feel that we're, we're strained as, as, as we sit in front of the laptop or in front of your computer keyboard so it's about releasing that tension there how, how do we do it well we have to sit with our back straight back straight uh, your right back of your hand and your left palm like so back straight like this and the shoulders back don't force anything back relax and I'm going to go back to the internal breath but now I'm going to focus in this here in the back of the neck and, and the shoulders and I'm going to add an, a different element to this particular exercise now because I want to get rid of the strain that I feel here because of the way I've been sitting. So the way I want you to imagine this is this. On the internal breath, I want you to imagine you're like a balloon. As I'm breathing in through the nose, you can feel your shoulders and the back of your neck inflate. Imagine it, feel it inflate. And then when you breathe out naturally, you don't force it, don't, don't blow, just allow it to go. I want you to imagine someone on a balloon has released a valve. And as they release that valve, they're releasing all the pressure. The pressure goes out. So again, just do that with me for a couple of minutes now. So we'll breathe in through the internal, through the nose again. We will feel the nose, peripheral, and we'll aware of the energy. But as I'm breathing in, I'm going to inflate the shoulders and the back of the neck. And then on the breath out, I'm going to imagine I've opened the valve up on the balloon and I'm letting my stress out. you're biting your jaw that's a sure sign that you're stressed relax the jaw and so i just want to describe to you the sensation i feel when I, when i'm actually doing that the sensation I feel is that I feel oh, I, I, it is as if all that stress and pain just crawled from the back of my neck and, and across my shoulders. I'm released. I've just released everything. When I released in my mind that valve after the breath in, I can hold it for a second if I want to, breathe out, not forcing anything, but just like you would do when you were a kid. You let the balloon go and it would zzz everywhere. You just and you let that go. You know you can do that for any part of your body. Your legs, if you feel stiff within your legs, you can do it for your legs, you can do it for your arms, you can do it for your head. All you've got to do is picture this uh, balloon being inflated and then allowing the uh, allowing the, uh, the valve, opening the valve and just allowing it to come out. And you've got to 
you got to, I think you can experience that stress it's just being released from you now. You know, it's so important to find a way to deal with your stress. Never more so than the world we live in today. We live in, as in the 21st century, I, I, I reckon uh, stress is probably the biggest killer that we have. And unless you find a way of what I'd call a coping strategy, something that you can use, you can reach down to your toolbox, you, you, you can use it, and then helps you to step forward, helps you to face the next day. It helps you to uh, to move forward. <clears throat> I know um, I, I probably get, get on some people's nerves sometimes because I'm a laughing joke about so much. And that and, and probably the reason being with regards to that is not because I'm not taking things seriously in my life. It is because I refuse to, to look at the negativity within everything. And I try and control that so I can see it positive. Because I know, I know that if I can make myself smile, it's like that great poem by um, Spike Milligan, who talks about the infectious smile within his poetry. And, and he was saying how he smiled to somebody else and, and they smiled back to him. Simple technique. But that remaining positive is is the very thing that carries you through. You've you've got to find a way. And what I do with Pain Point Coach is that I try and create. I want you to imagine a toolbox. So I create this emergency toolbox for my clients, and uh, and I fit tools in there for them. So to give you an example, if if for instance. Uh, you phone me up and I and I fixed appliances and you phone me up and you, and you said, John, my TV's not working, can you come around to me? And I turn around and all I've got is a great big lump hammer and you're looking at me and you're thinking, there's no way you can do that job or this job with that lump hammer. What are you going to do? You just can't do it. I've got the wrong tool to fit the job. There's no way it can be done. Well, my role within Pain Point Coach is to find or to create bags of tools, whether it's tools of confidence, whether it's tools to um, to change your belief system, because that's a massive one, a belief system. That's a really, really big one. But also, it's stress. Because, you know, if you, if you can't deal with your stress, if you feel overwhelmed with your stress, and you are doing nothing about it, then eventually this chasing wealth will, be, will come at a great cost to your health. You've got to make sure, especially as, as, as we get older, that you take time. Time for you to develop yourself, your inner self, so you're more capable of dealing with the world as it is now. Because for anyone around my age, um, so uh, as much as I don't like it, I'm 60 now, so uh, but anyway, about my age, we, we came up and grew up in such a different world, you know, we, we never had mobile phones, we certainly didn't have computers, um, and um, I'm trying to think of that, that Space Invaders would be the, the, the big thing, and it sort of may, maybe in the early 80s, and that, that, was, that was probably it, about, about it. But these things are really overtaking everybody's world. You know, people just sit on it and they're getting stressed if somebody hasn't liked something on a, on a post that they've put up or they're not getting known sorts of feedback. <coughs> and it's become a stressor in itself. And stressed if they don't even post something on, 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 on here. So uh, my job, my, my role is to uh, create, help people create a new belief system. My role is to help them make, people make, help people feel more confident in, in dealing with um, themselves, the way they manage themselves, communication with other people, and uh, help them with the decision making. <clears throat> and, and, and I don't do this through sitting out, chalk and talk. <clears throat> I create techniques, and some of them involve non-intuitive movement and exercise because I'm a great believer in, in, in experiential learning. That's from my perspective, how we learn better. And it's from that perspective is why I talked you through the uh, meditation uh, this evening. And uh, because you will have experienced it 
if you've done it and in my book that's 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 the best way to learn i'd rather do something and in doing it uh, not only uh, have the knowledge of it but i have the experience of it how many times do we hear employers talk about and say uh, say something like here uh, this guy's got uh, or the right credentials, or the right certificates, but there's no experience, and, and it didn't really deal with a situation that uh, quite, quite right with a, the way a more experienced player would have dealt with the situation. And uh, that, that comes from doing, and, and that's why I wanted to go through those exercises uh, with you. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed them. I, I hope, first of all, that the first exercise, the breathing through the nose and the focus on the, on the internal, brings you peace and calmness, because that's what it should do. I hope you create awareness about the energy within your, within your body, and then realising that if you're allowed this energy to bounce around everywhere, and I know when I haven't meditated for two or three days. My energy inside me is bouncing around every. So I won't say it's positive. There's a lot of negative energy in there. So it's not good energy. It's just bouncing around there. There's no control within it. So I have to bring peace and harmony to it. I have to connect with my inner self. Because I, every day I'm facing the external world. And sometimes to our detriment we forget our inner world. And how to, how to, how to, um, how to settle things down. Because if my inner world is upside down, then I, I will have no chance of control of my outer world because I'll probably bring the same chaos that I feel in my inner world to my outer world. So I hope what you've done through those exercises is learn uh, an exercise that you can do to conduct, calm you down. And secondly, because... Uh, if you're dealing with somebody that has uh, who's on a computer all the time, is forever complaining, and we we all give them stretching exercises and everything. It's the right thing to do, but that simple exercise there will actually just change you completely on on the way you feel. You back, you feel all the tension released, and uh, that's such a big thing now. So I hope uh, I hope those things are helpful. If they are, please. Please do leave leave me a comment and, and, and let me know. Um, I'd like to know whether you you'll be using them, um, whether you th whether it was helpful, and perhaps there may be other tips similar to this uh, one that I've discussed tonight that you that might be a topic that you'd like me to talk about. And let me know, and uh, I will I will I will prepare for it. So that this has been a, a transformational moments eight. Eight weeks gone by already, absolutely, but uh, I look forward to transformational moment nine. And who knows, you could be the person that comes along and says, John, can you give us a little talk about this? And uh, I'll pick up I'll pick, up, pick up with it next week and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much for watching. watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you.